If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything that you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on any listening platform like Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many, many more. It's everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. From Battlefield Studio Alpha, welcome to the Wartime Leadership Podcast, where we explore what spiritual resiliency looks like from different perspectives. We often focus on the physical, emotional, and social areas of resiliency, but too often we neglect the spiritual pillar. Now, this looks different for everyone. We will be exploring what spiritual resilience looks like in the lives of our guests who are people from all different walks of life. I'm your host, Nathan Coy, and this season was sponsored by Success Draft, where we help you transform your dreams into drafted plans. Head over to successdraft.com to get started on your future today. This month, we're trying something a little bit different. We're going outside of the box. We're calling this New Year New Money. We're going to do a deep dive into what NFTs are, what crypto looks like, the blockchain, all of these words that you've probably never heard of before. We're going to start it today with my good friend, Eric Skeldens. Eric, how are you doing today, brother? I am good, man. Thank you so much. This is uh, awesome. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here, Nathan. Appreciate it. Hey, y'all got to understand, um, I have been sitting in on calls for about two months to, 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 to really, truly actually figure out what NFTs are. I was brought on to a leadership team to kind of work through some, some Web3, some NFT, some up-and-coming crypto, uh, but to provide the leadership perspective with it. And I was connected with a guy by the name of Brandon David who brought me over to Kingdom Warriors, which, yeah. is, which is actually the first two, Kevin, the first two NFTs I ever purchased were Kingdom Warrior NFTs. Come on. Yeah. Represent. Yeah, I love how the veteran community and warrior community, um, you know, I'm an army veteran. Uh, and so just seeing even some of the, the former military uh, just support it, it really has been encouraging. And to see some of them who, you know, veterans who want to, one, like learn different skills, new technologies and learn that. And then two, just the the events we host and the whole idea of being a warrior and unleashing this warrior within and finding the greatness inside and finding purpose, uh, seeing some of the uh, veterans really get benefits from that has been really encouraging for us. Yeah. And I, you're, you're right. And I think the thing is, is that we get so stuck. I mean, I think the military is really stuck on that technology that we don't, we don't necessarily move as quick as we would like to. And this is something brand new. I mean, well, I say brand new. It's been out for a little while, but people are finally starting to catch up to what it looks like. Yeah, it feels like it's like a year old. Like last May was really when it started taking off this NFT technology. And, um, you know, it's basically like a year and a half uh, old, almost like in a way that like it's really like become somewhat mainstream last May or like starting to really get out there. Um, Some of the biggest brands that have taken off in that space really launched around that time yeah and and you just continue to see it utilizing technology like discord and and all these different types of avenues but we'll get into all of that here in a little bit before we get going too much down this road i want to start with five random questions they're really simple they're really easy i'm not gonna i'm not gonna try to hit you hard kevin so let's do or eric let's just try to to jump on this real quick if you could start a band what kind would it be and what would you name it? It's a good, uh, a good question. What kind of band would it be, or like what kind of music? What kind of music? I think 
I think I would like to do some sort of uh like a daft punk like you know the one more time i would like to start like a you know where the, everyone has like a like a some type of halo type you know warrior outfit on and it's like electronic dance music it's just like you know and just have a cool team of people on synth and like cool music and the cool beats and you know just basically just creating some dope music and um yeah and then having people have fun you know like dressed up and have a you know halo type you know type of kingdom warriors look at some of our kingdom warriors stuff and like some sort of you know uh you know halo whatever space suit on and and then make some dope music that i think i would call it like kingdom warriors dance mafia i don't know (laughs) kingdom warriors dance mafia coming to you live (laughs) i like it all right hey if you could choose any decade to grow up in which decade would you choose and why? Uh, I, I think the 70s could have been kind of cool to seeing that whole like this revolution, like there was a Jesus revolution, there was this hippie revolution, there was this like all this stuff going on with, you know, people, you know, government and this life and um, people are just really, um, you know, wanting God, wanting spiritual things. And so I think it could have been cool during that era, seeing even like Woodstock or like, I don't know, time to just, like, how do you evangelize in different ways and just re- relate to people? And I don't know, I think it could have been a cool time. Yeah, have you seen that new movie that's coming out with Kelsey Grammer? The Jesus Revolution? Yes. I want to. Uh, yeah, I've been hearing I've been hearing um, good things about it. And yeah, Jonathan Rumi, he played Jesus in The Chosen, and he's in there. So um, yeah, was, and I, I finally, I, I was in Los Angeles like a month or two ago and was with a lady who wrote a script around um the guy who played basically the guy who got um greg greg laurie saved who the who's the main character or who it's kind of about and and he's represented jonathan rumi plays that character but anyway she wrote a script about it and i got to hear the backstory of this guy and it was really really cool the guy who kind of started the jesus revolution and you know opened up their home and just started just inviting people in and stuff wow see i i I mentioned something just thinking like, yeah, and then you go into that whole story. I'm like, man, I'm glad I know you. I really am glad I know you, Eric. If you had to spend time, and I think I know the answer to this one, actually. If you had to spend a year alone with one other person, who would it be and why? Dead or alive? Or Dead or alive. Well, I think the you know, easy answer for someone who's a Jesus follower would be like, hey, I'd love just to hang out with Jesus, but... Um, other than that, maybe like Enoch, um, hang out with Enoch or, uh, Elijah, one of those. Yeah. Of I, I was way off. I was and way off. I would say like, if like, that's like biblical, but I would say like for, you said one day or one week or one year. Oh, one year alone. So just to hang out, um, maybe like in, um, I don't know, in modern time, maybe like, uh, Elon Musk, you know, hang out with Elon for a year and just kind of just, th- you know, think about, you know, solving the problems they're trying to solve, um, whether it's social media or rockets or, you know, electric cars, just hang out and just see how, you know, he thinks and operates and functions and leads organizations. Oh, I think that'd be awesome. I mean, just just listening to him on stage once and just watching him walk through the different silos because he talks about having silos where he kind of has to go up and out and come back into the silos of thought. Mm -hmm. And just to see him like literally do that before your eyes, like just watching him work through it. Absolutely mind blowing. All right. Yeah. I'm giving you two plane tickets, Eric. I'm giving you two. One is to somewhere that you've never been. And one is to somewhere that you've already been. Where are these tickets to? Uh, one that I've never been, uh, would be to go to, uh, Jerusalem, go to Israel. Uh, that's like one of the, the things I'm like, Oh, I need to go to Israel. And I'm, I'm really planning on going in 2023. Um, haven't been yet and just been feeling called, like I need to go out there and just spend time out there. Um, two would be probably just, uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. That's where my, uh, dad's from. He came out here in the eighties, um, on a tennis scholarship. And my grandpa and I have some family out there in South Africa. So just go out there and, you know, reconnect with family. I haven't been since 1996. I was five years old. 
So go back out there and like connect with some of our family out there. Wow. See, that's really cool. And whenever you, you first mentioned that your family, your dad was from South Africa, just we had a foreign exchange student from Johannesburg when I was in high school that was from South Africa. Absolutely amazing experience to be able to interact because things that you think that are experienced there are not actually experienced. It's, it's myths for what's, what's handled there. So that's really interesting. If you were going to go to the movies alone, what would be the perfect film for you to watch by yourself? Now, Eric, this doesn't necessarily have to be a movie that's out yet. It can be a future movie. Got it. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm a big, you know, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. So one of those two just, you know, like if I ner- just want to nerd out or like, you know, I don't, my wife or someone doesn't have to watch it. I could just watch it and kind of just be entertained and be like, man, this is cool. But it's cool watching it with people too truth but if you could have that whole movie theater to yourself and watching it i think that would be awesome and pretty epic especially if they put on like all three lord of the ring movies one after yeah. the other yeah. oh. all right hey uh eric thank you so much uh for going through those questions not too hard not too easy also it was just right i think uh why don't you walk us through your background take us back to you can take us back to your army days you said you're you're a, a veteran or take us before then, whatever you want. Just kind of take us from the past and bring us up to the present. Yeah. So growing up, you know, I really, really uh, kind of very, very entrepreneurial, uh, creative. Kind of knew I was kind of a creative type of kid. Um, it used to be the kid selling, um, selling basically go to Sam's Club, get bulk, you know, Snickers, Star, Starburst, and different stuff, and sell it to my classmates and. Um, you know, like how do I, you know, get some extra dollars for the things you want to do. And, um, and a lot of the need at the time in school is like, Hey, you know, we just want some candy during school or during, you know, like whatever. And so I'll just be the connection with that. And so just, um, I really kind of, you know, never, never really liked following a lot of rules. I always kind of question rules and Chris question, like, why you always have to like, you can't talk and you have to stay in line and, you know, and I, Growing up, I, I, you know, just was a BC student, uh, was labeled ADD, ADHD, dyslexic, different things like that. And, um, you know, so that kind of really even made me think I was like, oh, well, I just need to be a class clown or, you know, just figure out my own type of, you know, way through school and whatever, because I'm, I know I'm not going to get a scholarship on my grades or academics. And so, uh, just related to, you know, being fun, just, you know, I played basketball, my, you know, Malcolm Gladwell first 10,000 hours, you know, training at something was playing basketball, you know, it was a killer three point shooter, uh, just, you know, was, I think. And then the second thing was, um, I ended up dropping, I was failing math and they were like, Hey, you're, you know, you, you're, I was on in my junior year of high school in Louisville, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth area, where the fighting farmers, they were like, Hey, you know, you're can't really play or can't do anything until you pass math. And so I don't know. I ended ended up just kind of just being discouraged on basketball. I knew and I wasn't really going anywhere with it. They that school had just so many good. It was a five you know five A school. We had a, just so much talent in basketball, and I was just like, even though I spent so much time, I kind of got nervous and kind of scared, um, like just playing with some of these people. So like I would be really good at rec ball, but then in the real games and stuff, I would I would not play as well just through you know nerves or just like being like you know and just not playing as I think as good as I could have, even though it was super competitive, like the, the people out there, they're just dunking. They're like, just so tall, just like, just really good players. Like, and so me, I'm, I'm six foot, but it's like, still there. These people are like six, five, six, three, just like, and just very more talented and like athletic. And so anyways, I knew I kind of wasn't gonna get a scholarship in that. So I ended up actually getting a cheerleading scholarship, uh, to co-ed, you know, uh, school in Weatherford college, uh, got a cheerleading scholarship. And, um, really was this, you know, ended up plunking out of math three times, kind of partying too much and stuff. Um, we did get like third in the nation twice, uh, with that school over a three year period. So I like, I took like a three year, you know, because I failed math a few times, I ended up, you know, taking a three year journey just in community college. Um, and, you know, being on the, uh, Weatherford college team, we competed out in Daytona, Florida, against some of the other top Juco colleges and. Um, got a, 
you know, really just so get, you know, I used to do flips and stunts and all this cool, you know, they call you a stumbler if you know how to stunt and tumble. I was like, you know, pretty, so I found out I was just really kind of able to go after like, you know, things like, you know, flips and you do all these like acrobatic stunts and like, you know, throw the girls up and catch them in one hand and, you know, do these cool, you know, things. And I was just noticed I was pretty, you know, just good at some of that stuff. And later on when I, um, really saw that cheerleading wasn't going to be like a journey for me in the long run. Um, I, uh, I ended up just going to home and just trying to work after I flunked out of math a couple of times. And finally they were like, um, kind of finished with that, you know, side. I ended up, um, just basically trying to see what I wanted to do. And I, that's when I enlisted in the Texas army national guard. Um, because I, I knew I wanted to finish like school one day and like, but I wanted to still serve both my grandfather served in the military. Uh, my, my, my dad's dad from South Africa served in the Korean war and my other, um, grandpa who's Hispanic, Emilio Solis, he was, um, in the air force and, you know, ended up, you know, working on, you know, with NASA and different stuff, um, in the future. And, you know, he's passed away. Um, my grandpa in South Africa is still alive, but anyways, I just was like, you know, I have two brothers and it's just me and two brothers and three kid boys. And I was like, well, no one served my family. So I feel like it would be good for me. Maybe just find some purpose, some discipline. I really felt like I had a lot of authority issues. I didn't like, you know, I didn't like following rules, which I feel like it's in the future. It's good to find out, you know, what rules you want to follow and don't and to kind of like innovate and break rules. But still, you still have to have a, like a, a, a good, a good relationship with, you know, how God created things and order and structure and like God's reason for order. So I feel like, you know, God kind of, you know, put that, in my path to really see some discipline and order and structure that was good for my personality and the way I think and, you know, how I'm, you know, wired. And then, um, so yeah, and ended up, ended up getting an airborne contract at the Dallas MEPS. Um, and then, uh, went to airborne school, Fort Benning, Georgia infantry school. And then when I got back, I enrolled in university of North Texas. I got married, um, outside of Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, after three months with uh, the love of my life, we have five daughters now. Uh, afterward, God said, finish what you started. And I ended up, uh, finishing my business degree while I was doing drill once a month down in Austin in an airborne unit and then an, an infantry only unit, uh, in the Dallas area. Um, and then, yeah, I did a six year, six year contract and with that and learned a lot, uh, learned a lot about just teamwork and like not caring about just yourself. Like, oh, can I do my push ups and sit ups? And can I like, you know, focus on what I'm good at, but like, you know, how, how do how you have to operate as a team and a platoon and, you know, the, you know, each leader of each, those organizations having to function and, and the hierarchy and stuff. So I, I learned a lot from that. And if you look at what we're doing now, there's a lot of even some of that we're doing with whether it's hierarchy in our team or even with NFTs, we even put some military style lingo, like, you know, like different ranks. And so the idea of gamifying something, everyone in the military, you wanted to get E5 and get the sergeant. People would work so hard to become an E5 and a sergeant and like get that respect and honor. And it's like, it showed me like just from a, as I went through business school and marketing and psychology, like the, you know, like earning something, getting somewhere. It's just like, and you can, you can see that all and learn from that and reverse psychology, like implement that in different things of, you know, giving rewards and why do you know why when you do when you play something you want to get like a notification a bell or why when you go to casino it's like noises everywhere and ding 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 and now you're winning something so i i, I really loved studying that in school and even in the military kind of looking at the psychology behind how do you get millions of people to follow something and that kind of goes back to just the rules like how do humans follow rules why do we follow rules how do we how do some people break rules and then they end up making whole new rules because they you know create something different yeah and i i like the structure of the military and it's actually funny to hear you say that you didn't like the authority figures you didn't like that authority being placed above you but yet you joined the military yeah yeah and i knew i needed it i like i knew i knew so basically the way you know i had a scholarship i kind of ruined the scholarship part I ended up, you know, just doing, was doing stupid stuff. And so I knew that I knew the route I was going without any respect for authority and stuff was going to be, you know, either, you know, dead in jail or, you know, just whatever, just like, 
just not having a good life. So I knew I needed to like learn like about structure and authority in a healthy way and get a, a better perspective of it. And I just, I was like, I was so kind of, there was time, it was a time when there was a, so much like, I was learning about so much. And when I first got in college, I was learning just so much about so much corruption within, you know, maybe our government, past stuff that happened to our government, even other governments, you know, and was there was a lot of conspiracy stuff too that, I mean, you can't really prove it, but it's kind of like, there's a lot of information, but you, there's no way to prove it. So there was, I was like, kind of just like, dude, like I was so like against all of the systems that were like, you know, I feel like the system is just so evil. And it's just, anyways, and, and, you know, you come to find out that there, in every system, every organization, there's good and there's bad. There's people in the government that are good. There's people in the government that are bad. There's people in the military that are good leaders, people that are bad leaders. And then, so really it just taught me that you have to, you, you don't just because, you know, one cop does something racist doesn't mean all cops are bad. It's just like, you have to learn that. And so, you know, in the school system, other people aren't going to teach you that. Sometimes education system may teach you that everything is just evil and just you just whine all the time, you know? Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with the professor, the teacher, whoever whoever the perspective is coming from, right? And you're right. In the military, there are good leaders. There are bad leaders. I, I say, though, that you probably learn from both of them. So talk about your yeah, leadership yeah. journey a little bit, your perspective on what it looks like, like what you what you did in the Army. You know, everyone tries to make E5 to be that sergeant, but then how that has transitioned into uh, now Kingdom Warriors. Yeah, so I would say, um, yeah, I mean, I saw some, you know, like a Special Forces commander um, when I was in this airborne unit that you know, the special forces commander was leading it and he was like one of the best leaders I've ever seen. Just like, you know, pursuing education um, and all that stuff and just leadership. Yeah, and it's 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 really interesting to see uh, when those types of people that have to have that dedication and that focus, especially in the community, the special forces community and how they have to have mm. that that type of immediate you know grab and and grit with their people yeah so i mean he like and the cool thing is that it was like he was you know battalion commander um he was just like they were leading even the special task you know to like bus cartels on the side and like and then he was like pursuing his mba at university of texas which is what like i wanted to go to before i got married and like you know ended up just um I wanted to stay in Denton uh, and go to University of North Texas. I was like, my goal is to go to UT Austin and like, I don't know, just anyway. So just like a lot of things he was pursuing, whether it was education, whether it was his leadership and just like staying in shape and just being um, just like disciplined. I was like, man, like that's the type of like, like, you know, like the way, like jumping out of planes and organized and just like, you know, I was like, man, I want to be like an airborne, you know, like operator like that. So anyways, so I, I don't think I ever was like, yeah, like it, aspiring to be like that in the military. I just saw quickly though, like even though I like I was inspired by it, it just seemed like the military. Like I wasn't like the kind of like I don't know. I wasn't the I don't know. I was still like I, I didn't really fit in as much for some reason in the military. Like so, I really saw just like I spent my time. I kind of studied, learned, but I didn't. I don't think I ever put in my all in the military. I would say just because I don't know. I guess I just I kind of knew it was like once a month thing, you know, and it just kind of like it. Be, because it was the once a month thing, I was like, I knew that I wanted to do business and like um, do like something else that was entrepreneurship in the future. And so I kind of just, I think I kind of felt like I kind of checked out. I was like, well, all right, so once a month, show up, do my best for, you know, and then it was like two weeks, three weeks out of the year. Um, but for some reason, this unit though, like they were just so hardcore. And so like they were, because they were like, the the only airborne unit um in texas and like there's like i guess one in hawaii maybe in the in the national guard so they were just like you know ex rangers or ex you know uh special forces or just whatever that still that didn't want to be full time but they still wanted to like be the you know i guess they call them weekend warriors you know but like not to be a weekend warrior cuz i went to another unit where it was very just like chill like they didn't do they would still go you know infantry in it Anyways, that airborne unit was very like high speed. Like they were just, they were like every month you're jumping, you're in the field, you're doing stuff and training. And so they were pretty, they're like almost like two, it was like, it was like kind of a, it was like a whole new world for me because they were just so like, 
like oh you know and i'm just like dude i'm just like trying to like i i want to do business and all this stuff but so i feel like it was kind of a dilemma because you were not in there full time yeah and i'm not gonna talk bad about the weekend warrior right i'm not even gonna call you that you know it, it's the guard i think that we give too much of a bad rap to the guard and the reserves but when you think about it, I mean, here's some individuals that must come in and still maintain qualifications and still be able to do a job that they've been assigned, mm. even if it's only one weekend a year, two weeks out of, or one weekend a month, two weeks a year. You still have to keep up those qualifications just the same as yeah, any other person. Do. And I think that we forget that in the active duty side and sometimes put too much of a little pressure on it. But I think the military gave you what you needed. You needed to have mm -hmm. that direction, that focus, that guidance to understand where leadership comes from and what that looked like. And, the, and it gave you all of that. So I think we try to keep people in just to keep our numbers up. But there's people that come do a job. They do it really, really well. And then it's time for them to move on and get jobs on the outside. Mm -hmm. So what were you doing as far as a job during the regular work week versus yeah, so I I feel let's see. So I for a time I was out of college. Oh, I guess the first one was I was uh, working a machine operator inside of this big target distribution center and it was like one of the only uh or one of the first like automated pretty auto 80% automated meaning that machines are running most of the throughput for like getting them on the trucks for the for the freezer and perishable goods. And so that was like a surreal job. This German company like had the machines and I, I would like have to climb up, you know, so kind of related to the whole airborne like infantry, like I was like having to climb up these ladders and make sure, sure the, you know, the faults were good. If there was like a, there was all these sensors, everything was sensor based. So if they're like, if some of the flap of the, you know, plastic came off and hit the sensor, you would like go in there and the machine would stop because it would think that it was going to hit something. So you would have to go in there and fix it. And so sometimes it'll be all the way up there in the freezing cold or in the, perishable everything was either 34 degrees or like negative something in the freezing so it was a pretty epic job so i did that for you know almost a year and then ended up doing lift uh lift uh driving and lift uh recruiting like affiliate marketing through basically creating my own codes like dallas cowboys or hotel perks or bar perks for like my custom codes and i was getting paid 20 dollars uh to to give out free lift credits so i would give out these cards um where I'd give out free lift credits, and they'll pay me $20. And I I was a pretty lucrative uh, gig for me because I was driving and just promoting with like these custom perks. And that's really when I found out I was really good at like sales, marketing, and even like just connecting people to something that I was passionate about. And I really liked Lyft at the time uh, just because it, I don't know. I was just like this, I was like this Lyft brand ambassador where I just promoted Lyft all the time. And so, and I just liked the software. I liked the idea that they innovated in the, with this technology company. They ended up becoming, you know, like ten billion dollar valuation plus company, and I was like, dude, I I got like a thousand users for you guys. Like, I, I should have got some <laughs> equity in that. But it what what was cool is it also really taught me like just how valuable technology is and using super cool technology and connecting, you know, parties and making it a fun experience. So that really even brought my, you know, I was like, I I really like technology even while I was in in business school. But that really just um, even showed me more value for technology and like in the idea, like having an idea, solving a problem at mass scale and how that's really where you can really um, get to a, a high level. And so um, with that, um, after that, I ended up getting working for a software company, doing software sales and stuff. And so that's where um, that was next. And then, um, yeah, and then I ended up getting to freight brokering and um did millions in revenue doing freight brokering and um then for three the past since 2019 exited that in 2019 and um and been doing entrepreneurship you know marketing agency learning how to do uh digital marketing speak online learning how to funnels and you know all the all this different digital marketing stuff uh just been helping other people other brands and then just doing some consulting and um and then yeah a year ago launching kingdom warriors so it's it's really funny that you talk about the logistics side of stuff who jeff who just jumped on is the producer of the show he and i have been in logistics for a really long time uh mm -hmm. and it's funny that you talk about the german company that owned the lift company the the lift 
because the same German company owns almost all of our lifts that we have in, in oh, our wow. job. So we understand that throughput and that aspect. We've been trying to, to computerize throughput for a very long time. So knowing the good and the bad of the technology that's out there, is important and seeing but but seeing where it can go is just as important when you look back i know that there was moments of resiliency that you you reached out to that you were you were gravitated towards what well first off how do you define spiritual resiliency uh spiritual resiliency i would define as like when times are tough and there's this like you know, there's no answers, you know, where do you, what do you lean on to get through it? Like what becomes your rock or stable place, um, in your faith. Oh, you're muted. Nathan. First rule about podcasting. Do not mute yourself or at least check it before you actually start doing that. Jeff's about to laugh now. No, he's not going to laugh at all. Okay. That's good. How do you build spiritual resiliency within yourself? Um, I would say just, you know, repetitions, you know, as the mother of learning, just as you're going through tough times or you just don't have the answers, you, you, you know, you're, tr you're trying things and you can't figure it out. Just um, learning to rely on, on prayer, rely on God, um, you know, ask, ask God for answers and, you know, for help, um, you know. I believe in Jesus, so I, you know, I ask God, Father God, and Jesus, like, man, I need help. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where, where we're gonna, you know, how we're we gonna make rent this month, or what do we need to do today, or who do we need to help today? What, you know, who are we gonna serve today, and how, like, how are we gonna make things happen? And just, um, yeah. And then as as it as God shows up, as God gives answers, solutions, blueprints, and as things happen, you know, then you start seeing your faith muscle. One, you activate it, and two, you know, God comes through; He He provides, and then, then eventually, you're like, oh, well, you know, like that's like I'm gonna rely on that because, you know, just trying to figure it out myself, do everything my own, and just be stressed out doesn't isn't the best way. Yeah. Okay. So then, what about your family? Because I know you've got you've got all those ladies in the house between your wife and your five daughters. How do you build resiliency, spiritual resiliency, specifically within your family? Um, I would say, you know, my daughter's, my oldest is eight, my youngest is one. So, um, just really, you know, encouraging them to hear how to hear the voice of God, how to, you know, build their own faith and, um, you know, in God and, um, yeah. And as they're going through their own, you know, whatever, like being young and just f trying to figure out life or emotions, just trying to train them, you know, train them for reigning. So yeah. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of tough because it's like you know I don't know. It's like each kid is different and like you know how they kind of receive or you know they'll like pray and be like oh like I don't like I don't know. So it's interesting to even seeing their faith and kids. You know, it'd be so childlike, but some you know they're like they're like oh well you know I don't I don't feel God or I don't hear him. Like oh well you know it's the you know it's I don't know just even explaining faith to kids. It's been it's been interesting. So yeah, we're just learning and just like uh you know just being like, Hey, there's no junior Holy spirit. So they can, <laughs> they can connect with God and his spirit. Yeah, there's, there's not a kid version of the Holy spirit. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's, it, you know, and, and seeing your transition and knowing it between the army to, to corporate America. And now, uh, with kingdom warriors, NFT, how have you built spiritual resilience within the teams that you've operated within? Um, I would say it's just, we, we just, you know, keep, I think like the spiritual realm, um, very open at our company and with our teams. And we're just, um, we're kind of always partnering with God on solutions to the problems we're going through as a company or to how do we, you know, if people are going through stuff, like our team is going through, you know, their mom has cancer or just stuff, you know, we're. We're constantly praying and be like, all right, God, like, you know, and 
you know, people are dealing with healing stuff. We're praying for healing for them. Um, so we're just kind of just, we keep faith pretty, uh, in prayer, you know, pretty active in our, in our teams. And, um, so just trying to just make it like, you know, just like a family, you know, we're just a family or companies, a family of warriors. And, you know, we all have our own lives and trials and tribulations. And so we just try to be there for each other. Yeah. And, and one thing that I really, really like is that whether it's on the discord page, the, the Facebook groups, the five day challenges, moving over to even the holder, um, the private holder site, there's always people coming around everyone. It, it, yeah, like somebody yeah. throws out something that you know something's happened today it's, it's been a bad day and then all of a sudden it's like it's like the whole community kind of comes around and encompasses that person in that moment yeah and that's i think that's really the biggest thing is like learning you know an nft community or even a community of veterans or a community of anything that's surrounded by an idea or um just having a community that is encouraging loving and going to support you know each member yeah well hey you know speaking of kingdom warriors and the nft world and movies and all of that eric why don't you give us a little bit of a background of, of what kingdom warriors is what you're doing now with kingdom warriors and and what the future's looking like for us because i'm a holder so i'm officially saying us yeah come <laughs> on that's and so that's what i love about web3 so web3 basically allows us through the blockchain to have you know ownership of these assets um that's connected to this brand and so uh we had this idea for this brand if you're you know seeing online it's you know kingdom warriors and um and it was this idea of these you know this this world of eladria that we ended up you know creating and it's basically like an orphan it's like a, a story of an orphan that goes um that you know has to discover that he's you know um, a child of a king that was you know and basically has to discover his lineage and overcome obstacles and so it's the story I kind of went through the military or through my identity thinking I was ADD ADHD like my dad you know he doesn't have affection for me or you know he's just always just he just wants me to perform and kind of having these orphan tendencies and really realizing your identity and really pulling out um, you know the strengths inside you and the greatness and um, and then getting mentors and people as you go on your journey to really start calling out the gold in you. So it's it's this I it was this started with this this amazing art. We had an amazing um, artist that had these you know we had this idea for these Kingdom Warriors collection. Uh, you know we wanted to do this large international collection where people around the world that you know like the art like this idea of a community that is just going to encourage you, support you, and have um, value in terms of all these things we we're going to build as a brand and you were going to have ownership over a piece of it uh, through the nft and so it just started with this idea like that and um, i raised fifty thousand um, dollars a year ago in november for this idea to launch it and build the brand and build value for the people that were going to be part of it and um yeah since then um we've you know reached 81 nations uh we have a, a film with the Lord of the Rings actor, John Rice Davies, who played Gimli from Lord of the Rings, narrating our film project. Um, we have, um, you know, a musical album on Spotify that's reaching, you know, tens of thousands of listens a month. Um, so we've just had the, all these creative warriors even come from the artists to writers to, um, to people that want to help with merchandise and different stuff. Just come and be like, hey, we're a part of this brand. We, let's all help build this brand up. And so it's almost been like this team effort to where so many amazing people from the holders to just the original team that we started hiring and growing, um, just were like, Hey, like what if we built our own, you know, Marvel or Disney type franchise with stories. And, um, and it's just, it's been really cool to see what God's done with just as we're, as we shared the vision, shared the idea and, um, people just came in, um, attracted to it and partnered with it. And, um, we're yeah, one year old now, and we're just like excited to see what's going to happen for the next few years as we keep building. I mean, and and this thing has just continued to grow and grow, and there's angel investors and just different stuff that's happening where people are recognizing the mission and kind of coming apart. And I'll tell you, I listened to that recording that you had where you played the the voiceover, and oh my goodness, mm -hmm. 
I mean, it just, it sounds like I can't, so I can't powerful. get his face out of the, the frame when I'm looking at it, but it is so powerful to hear it voiced out and what it sounds like. It just, it hits you like a ton of bricks just to see the reality of what this story is turning into. Yeah. So the story is just evolving. And as people like, you know, John Rice Davies um, from Lord of the Rings is narrating it. It's just like, it's like, man, and to see that him see the scripts and him love the story. It's just, it's really just, it's really, um, you know, just a testament of, you know, the people who have come a part of it to help us write and help us build, build out this uh, world. And, you know, and um yeah the team it's like it's such a cool team effort of creatives that have came together and now people are you know on that level of an actor are recognizing it it's pretty yeah neat. and you can hear his passion when he when he's doing the lines it's it's not just like you mm -hmm. know somebody just reading it and and trying to perform it but he's truly it almost looks like he's digested what he's saying and he believes it enough that you can hear it come out in the form of word art and yeah, it's can. truly like an like like a military, right? We're on a mission. We have the specific mission of of what is being developed. And I I wasn't getting into NFTs like at all. I was like, no, I don't understand this world. I'm not going to do it <laughs> until I found one with a mission and what it looked like, which was Kingdom Warriors. I decided to come alongside to to go ahead and do it. And I was I was really really worried because I didn't know fully, and I and I still don't fully understand it. But you and the entire team at Kingdom Warriors has been absolutely amazing. I think the the thing that has impressed me the most is that there there's a lot of older individuals that are purchasing these NFTs for like their grandchildren, uh, for their their own children, their grandchildren, and they don't fully mm -hmm. understand what NFTs are. But you and the team take time to sit down and walk through what it looks like. Here's what you're going to do. We're, we're going to go over to MetaMask. We're, we're, and you just you walk through all the stages and you make it so easy. Yeah, that's uh, I think I think that's yeah the beauty of our team. We have such an excellent team. And I think, you know, going back to the military, I think that's kind of in the business school and learning business management was just like, how do you create a culture of honor and like a you know, company culture? You know whether it was the military or your company and how do you make a company culture where people are enjoying the work people are passionate about it and people are pouring into serving people and um that's what we've really just been our goal is to, to how do we have an organization that from our holders to our staff to where we're just like anyone who comes in our in our realm of this crazy nft world or crypto world or you know hey we're making film and music and uh, art and you know coaching and courses and it's like it's this this ever growing world that we're building but it's like as the, anyone who comes in our world we're just going to encourage them and support them and welcome them in and um and just so i don't know i really don't have all the answers to it but i, I feel like when i when i studied even like those companies technology companies you know a lot of them even had these some of these keys to create like a fun culture and i just i i would always ask the question like okay, some of these companies can create this culture where people are playing table tennis and just everyone's positive and there's coffee everywhere and, you know, they're free food and free lunch. And it's like, you know, I was like, not, not to say like, obviously, like I, I wish we had the budget and funding. Like, and I think one day we will, where we just have a nice office and everyone who's there can have all the cool perks of, you know, working on that company, but not even just that, but like, uh, you know, we're all remote, you know, we have people on our staff from South Africa, from the Philippines, from, texas from california florida like we're just you know up north we're just all over the place and so we're having to create the culture digitally um through zooms and slack and all this stuff but um what is it just like how do we create a culture where it's like everyone everyone is just trying to respect each other and we're all like you know how can you know how can we support you know the other other people and so um uh yeah, I guess the other thing was this like how like what would be the what I always ask is like what is the kingdom solution on top of what the world is doing or like like the 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 standard you know what's like the kingdom solution what is the you know partnering with heaven how can we bring even more um solutions to where you know the so let's give the music industry for an example in the music industry they sign you know artists and then you know so those artists end up feeling like kind of enslaved as we're looking into web three and like a new music label, we're like wondering what if there's so many even good 
Christian artists or even just artists in general that are out there that what if we had a label that was more fair and more able to um, sign artists and work with artists, help promote their brand, promote their the music, but then still bring more, um, you know, more of a win-win back to the artist. So we're asking that question in music and film and everything we do. Yeah. And, and you've, you've done a good job of creating cause, cause it's like Brandon always says every single time that I, I listen to him and, and I talk to him, he's always saying, when's the last time you were ever on equal ground as everyone else, where we're all trying to learn this thing together. It's, it's just like a unit. Everybody has their specialty. Everybody has, you know, the different talents that they come into the organization with. I'm still trying to figure out where I add value to kingdom warriors, but I think it's in the story that I have for my uh, my warriors. And I've actually I've been formulating a really, really good story for mine based on my son being that he's adopted and and this this kind of surrounding on that. So I think that we each have those talents that we bring. It's just sometimes we have to look a little deeper in order to be able to find it. Yeah, so good. I mean, even that you guys do podcasting and you guys know about this. I mean, there's. I mean, there's opportunity for even like have, creating a a product line for other people who want to learn podcasting, a course, um, packages to, you know, done with you, done for you. And so we're trying to even teach people as we're coming to what time where they're saying, oh, it's going to be the biggest recession. And, and it probably is. But at the same time, there's skills that we can have, skill sets and the way we can package and market things and position things to where we can teach our community. If you're a holder of Kingdom Wars, we want to teach you how to build your personal brand. We want to teach you to be more confident, teach you to overcome your fears of, say, public speaking like I had to do. I was so afraid of public speaking, but God was like, the thing you're most afraid of is the thing I need you to learn and like tackle. And so to get your reps in to do stuff you don't like to do and, you know, what do they say? Do hard stuff, <laughs> you know, like you're going to you need to choose your heart. If you're going to one of the hard is like you just eat poorly the, your whole life. And now you have cancer and now you, you know, whatever, you have some sort of health issues, you can't play with your kids or you could choose your heart by exercising, you know, choosing the healthy option instead of the, you know, the bad option. So it's like something's going to be hard no matter what we do. Yeah. Do hard stuff. I think, I think I've actually seen a few shirts like that. Hey, uh, talk to us about the kingdom mind, your book. Yeah. So the kingdom mind kind of came with this, um, kind of the stuff I was really learning about the kingdom of God, about marketplace ministry, about Jesus, you know, 80% of the miracles he performed were in the marketplace. And it was like marketplace ministry, you know, type leaders I was learning from like Dr. Miles Monroe, who you can learn a ton from him online, just on YouTube or Spotify. And he had a book called Rediscovering the Kingdom and just how like in the democracy, how we have now, um, and our our Western culture view of the kingdom of God and how you know heaven operates um, is so different than you know basically this kingdom and this family and what we're basically invited into if we're believers. And so just uh, learning about that, and then even kingdom principles or strategies or solutions, which is kind of what I'm talking about. Like the the basically this idea that the kingdom of God operates like Chick Fil A is using kingdom principles by by one when they serve you even five dollar products ten dollar products they're smiling they're saying my pleasure they're enthusiastic they're not just like oh here's your mcdonald's like uh you know i'm angry i hate my life like they're they're te- they're doing principles just by doing simple things that work you know by giving back by um like helping their staff and like just doing these principles so it's like as I was learning from Dr. Miles Monroe, he was consulting like companies all over the world as a pastor, like that really understood the kingdom and how it works in podcasting. It works in media works in like, you can think about solutions and kingdom principles in every form of society and um, bring value to it. So that once I really started and I'm still learning the message more and more, but as I was learning about like heaven culture and kingdom principles, I was like, uh, really getting a lot of revelation for just um, learning what I learned in business school, learning what I learned in the military, and then um, and then in faith and spirituality and being like, how do you can all of this stuff is like if people, you know, I mean, you can help world governments, you can help world leaders. I mean, this stuff works wherever you go. And so it's like 
to me, I'm just like, oh, I want more people to know about this. That one, they have access to it, and two, like literally, you can if you just partner with God and partner with you know these kingdom principles, um, you can find work, you can you know add value to any organization, and um, and basically just where you're not you're not in a place of lack and and like oh woe is me i don't know anything i'm not good enough and you can go to a place where you're like no like i i do have access to help anywhere you know and serve anywhere i go absolutely absolutely and we will have a link in the description of that book as well as a link to kingdom warrior nfts so that people can learn a little bit more and and what that looks like as well as some of those facebook groups uh, and Discord, so that if people want to come alongside, uh, that it's limited because I think there's only what 1,500 left. Yeah, so to actually buy an NFT, there's like 1,500 left, which there is a secondary market for people who are reselling. There's a lot of what they call diamond hands, where they're like they're not selling until the movies come out, the me- like uh, until we blow up in three years or in one year. There's a lot of people holding that are like, hey, this is going to be huge in a year or two years from now. So they're holding, but there there are some people selling on OpenSea. Uh, so you like basically where the money goes to them, not to us. Like we sell it, and then now the people own it, and they it's theirs to sell after. I'm I'm a, I'm um, a diamond hand, so I'm just gonna hold on. To yeah, the- diamond hand, Nathan. So and then with that, yeah, in our Discord and also in our free Facebook group, we host monthly events. We give away tons of prizes and giving back. Um, we also part of Kingdom Warriors. We give ten percent to like fighting human sex trafficking and also. Um, to an orphanage in Uganda. We're actually buying um, a piece of land with Precious Kids Foundation. And um, they have a whole system of widows and orphans, like training them up and empowering them. And so we're just supporting that mission and seeing how do we keep ongoing um, help help out. Um, and so it's really cool to see the community get behind that. And even that's one thing I will say I love about the NFT world in general is they, they um, you know, people who love art and stuff, they like charity and they like art and stuff. and so bringing that into where you can give back and um, bring that as a part of the project is really fun. Um, And then, yeah, anyways, in the NFT education, we have free courses. We have, um, I mean, tons of curated content in our discord under NFT education and also like on YouTube, Kingdom Warriors NFT, uh, there's YouTube education. There's over, we've literally spent over a hundred, you know, over a hundred hours, literally just, answering all the questions that we could you know the most common questions people ask about is nfts a scam what is nfts what is the blockchain how is it how can you use it for impact how can you use it for you know um business or building a brand and we've just went through so many case studies so many different things which i'm not saying in this market today cryptocurrency or nfts is like everyone needs to do it the more more of the thing is like it this technology is so new and powerful that at least good to learn about and be aware of because in the next 10 years it is going to continue to just to grow and knowing some of these skills that will pay the bills in web3 technology and some of this stuff um i think will be good especially for you know younger people yeah absolutely and and people who are 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 going to see 5 10 15 20 years down the road and they start to see what this looks like i can look back and go yeah uh, you know i told you I told you so. You should have jumped on it a long time ago, but that's okay. Uh, with FTX and and these other companies, kind of kind of taking some some nose dives and some really bad decision making by some uh, people in the top echelons, I think that people are becoming scared to invest, and and they they don't need to. They need to to do it slowly and at a pace of which they mm-hmm. understand. And if that means the education piece, that's that's again where you all have excelled. Yeah, and so that's kind of where we position ourselves is the people who are they're web two, you know, they're on Facebook, they don't know what an NFT is, but they they like the idea of impact and like the film and the basically the the entertainment company we're building and this media company. They're like, hey, I want I want to support that. So they buy an NFT, they're supporting this big mission we're doing and then um the charity and then they're like well as i'm there you know i'm 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 buying i'm paying 200 dollars with this 200 dollars i'm getting you know thousands and one value in this art you know we have a sony designer who designed our kingdom warriors nfts the art that has sold over a million dollars to sony playstation 4 so the art alone is worth a ton just in like how good our artist is and like 
his quality of what he's done. But then now you're getting all this education that's free plus paid education and training and being in a place where if you want to learn more about cryptocurrency and the blockchain and NFTs, it's like you're you pay two hundred dollars and now you're getting all of this access to this membership to understand this stuff and be in this community. So it's it's really kind of like you said, like you don't need to just go buy all the cryptocurrencies, go do, you know, just spend all your money on this stuff. It's like get in a place like this for new people and there's obviously some ogs in there that do know a lot about they've made a lot of money in crypto and lost a lot of money so they have you know a lot more stories to tell and like share hey don't do this do this or like here's what i learned about that so there is a lot of good and there's just the cool thing is this is a really cool network from like ip attorneys to some people in vc capital to um movie producers to writers and creatives and artists and prophetic artists there's just this wide variety of people. I mean, like you and other army veterans and there's just, a, it's like a network of people. And we're, as we're building an out, we're just seeing how do we, this network, we have all these really cool people. How do we bring like masterminds and meetups and annual events? So your kingdom warriors will be a, um, a ticket to an annual event you'll be able to come to. So there's this, um, and then we do monthly virtual events. So there's like, we're basically just make it like it, like it's a pass that gives you, access to all these cool things we end up it doing. is literally a key to whole another world <laughs> pretty much yeah it's a key to yeah it's a key to this crazy realm and so it's kind of hard to describe all of it because it, like i like it's we're just it's just it's so much in one little key oh yeah so you kind of got to just get a key to now really i usually don't do this eric and i and i i i'm i'm biting my tongue to try to do it but you know what i'm gonna do it what is a book recommendation as an author what is a book recommendation that you have for our listeners? Yeah, one good one that really um, impacted me was Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. And, um, you know, he was a Navy SEAL commander and um, just kind of really going over taking accountability over our life and like what we what we do, our leadership, when we fail, when we make mistakes. And, um, you know, I want to go back and reread it just as I'm more in a leadership position now than I I was from the even from yeah no I really I ne- really never entered leadership at a high level in the military um, and just did one contract and got out and so just in the business world being in a leadership position and just being like um, yeah it's just a really good really good book on that so definitely recommend yeah, absolutely it on Audible or well hey Facebook. do you have any final words for our listeners yeah I would just uh, say I mean for all the dreamers creatives warriors out there. Um, You know, don't give up on your dreams. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Um, If you have a vision and you want to do it, you know, write it down, make a plan, um, look who you can partner with and, um, you know, just don't give up on what you want to do in life and um, keep getting the skills and position yourself to prosper in what you want to do and um, just keep going after it. Um, And it's, you know, anything's possible with God. And um, yeah, if you, if you have someone on your mind that you really, you know, you feel like you're called to do, um, you know, get, get wisdom and resources and mentorship on how do you do it. And, um, you know, I've just seen people from real estate to film, to any acting, like if people really felt called to do something, they really went after it and they kept training and they kept going after it. Uh, I just have so many stories of people just breaking through. Um, and so, um, yeah, just go after it and, um, yeah, just don't give up. Well, hey, thank you, Eric, for investing in us today, uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule, because I know that y- I, I've seen your your weekly, like every single time, like an opening and, and people are just jumping all over it. I actually went into your calendar and tried to, to jump on another date. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, like this guy's busy almost all the way through December. So thank you for taking the time to invest in us. Today's episode is only possible thanks to my friend and producer, G. Frazier with 369sounddesign.com. And now today, Jeff, you get to watch me do this, which is very odd, actually, because you're truly the one with the talent on this team because you get to make me sound good. We are blessed by the entire team here at the Wartime Leadership Podcast. See you next time. Be blessed. 